Here's a list of the prophets that God sent to mankind according to Islam. Now here's a map of where all these prophets were sent. Can you notice anything? Far be it for me to tell God how to do his job, but couldn't he have spread those prophets around a bit more? Maybe a couple to Norway or Tanzania, a few to China or Canada, or the odd one or two to Australia or India. As for when these prophets were sent, most of them were sent over 2,000 years ago. Again, I don't want to suggest that God is sleeping on the job, but we haven't had any prophets for quite a long time now, and let's face it, there are far more people around today, and far more who don't believe in the true religion. Now let's have a look at the divine books that God has sent to guide mankind. Can you guess which area of the world God sent them? You got it, the Middle East. Boy, God really loves the Middle East, doesn't he? The Quran does say that there were other prophets sent. There is a hadith that says there were 124,000 prophets sent. But it seems we only know the names of those who came from the Middle East. I was told that Buddha, Ram and Krishna were originally prophets of Islam, but their true teachings were corrupted. Well, yes, if, if you mean by corrupted, if you mean uh, completely obliterated um, uh, and replaced with something that is the very antithesis of everything that Islam stands for, then yes, you could say that um, they have been corrupted. But let's assume that Buddha, Ram and Krishna really were prophets of Islam and that there were indeed 124,000 prophets sent to mankind by God but their teachings were completely lost or corrupted. Then I have to ask, what was the point? What was the point of sending messengers if their messages had been totally lost? What was the point if people who received their message have neither record nor recollection of their message. According to Islam, the Old Testament and the Gospels have also been corrupted. Only the Quran remains pure and uncorrupted. That's because God himself is protecting the Quran. How do I know that? Well, because the Quran says so. Hmm, hang on a minute. Isn't that a bit like saying, it's true because it says it's true? And if God did protect the Quran, then why didn't he protect all the other books? Doesn't God want us to get the true, uncorrupted message? Or does he want it to be a bit confusing for us? Does he want it to be a bit of a puzzle? Some sort of a game, with God as the compare, in a glittery suit, telling us we must choose the correct door one leading to the joys of eternal salvation and the other the agony of eternal damnation. Though of course for most people there is no choice. Because most human beings remain in the religion of their birth. If you ask them they'll tell you it really was most fortunate because it also just happens to be the true religion. What a stroke of luck. <laughs>